Away we go with Weather for Weather Geeks, the Friday Eve edition, Thursday evening. It's Valentine's Day. Hope you had a, a good one today. Our weather certainly turned around nicely today compared to yesterday. It was, as expected, uh, several degrees warmer. We made it into the mid-40s this afternoon, 45. The official high at the airport. We're now halfway through this short month of February, and well, it hasn't been that cold. Only five out of 14 days have featured cooler than average high temperatures, and the coldest day was the very first day of the month with a high of just 19 degrees. So, you know, February uh, is not gone how I originally thought it would. It looks like we had the harsh cold uh, in late January rather than February, and I don't see much cold coming as we transition into the second half of February. Now, some seasonably chilly air for the next six or seven days, yes, but I do think that as we transition into that last week to 10 days of February, the map's going to look like this. Very cold and stormy out west and a ridge pumping through the east. And I told you last night when I showed you this map that I thought the colors would turn oranger and more red, and that happened tonight. And I think tomorrow's edition of the 8 to 14 day outlook may even be farther north and west with the red and orange. Uh, this looks like a very, very mild pattern. Now, the last two years during that kind of February 20th to the 26th time frame, we've had some days in the 70s. I don't think we're going to see that this year. The ridge doesn't look that strong this year, but some days with highs in the 50s and perhaps 60 or so, I can't rule that out just yet. I, I think the chances of something flirting with records and getting to the 70s like we've had the last couple of years, I don't think those chances are very high. Back here in the here and now, uh, it is, of course, quite a bit warmer, 14 degrees warmer than the 7 o'clock hour last night. It will be warm enough for liquid precipitation later on tonight. And speaking of liquid precipitation, wow, <laughs> look at this thing in the southwestern U.S. This has been a remarkably wet day in parts of Southern California, Southern Nevada, parts of Arizona, Palm Springs, California, out here in the desert east of Los Angeles. It's been one of the wettest days on record, and, you know, it's only 4 o'clock in the afternoon out there. Uh, there may be quite a bit more rain, uh, at least some more rain, uh, maybe not as heavy as it has been, but some more rain, additional rain, will fall this evening out in Palm Springs. Los Angeles and San Diego have gotten soaked. Las Vegas has gotten soaked as well. This is a very, very powerful storm in the southwest. Back here at home, it's not going to be a powerful storm at all tonight. We have a warm front through here. Cold front is back here. In between, we'll stay mild tonight. I think the radar will start to fill in with a couple of showers overnight as the cold front approaches, but it's not going to be much rain. A uh, couple of showers after midnight tonight, and maybe you run into a shower if you're an early riser tomorrow morning, but I think we can sound the all clear. A little after daybreak tomorrow, by about 8 to 8.30, we should be dry. Some sunny intervals then for the midday and afternoon, but our highest temperature tomorrow during the daylight hours will be right at sunrise. I think we'll settle in the mid-30s for the midday and afternoon tomorrow. This storm, as we've been talking about, is a mist to the south for us. Uh, we'll see some sun on Saturday, but it's still going to be a you know, seasonably chilly day, pretty close to the average in the mid-30s. As we go to the second half of the weekend, I think we're dry on Sunday. But this system is definitely more far, uh, taking a, a track farther north, and therefore I do think it'll try to spread some precipitation in our way Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening, but I don't think it is likely to be all that much. Here's a look at our uh, computer model uh, spread here for that uh, late weekend system. The GFS is kind of leading the pack right now with perhaps up to two inches late Saturday, Saturday night. That's an outlier, though. The NAM and the uh, European model quite a bit lower, and this is where my thoughts are. I think that uh, the GFS uh, happy hour run, as we call it, is quite a bit overdone with the snow on Sunday. So our weekend forecast, 33 Saturday, 35 on Sunday. This is pretty typical stuff for this time of the year. Uh, benign Saturday, good day to get your car washed after uh, the recent uh, snows. Uh, lots of dirty cars out there. Uh, Sunday, again, just a little bit of snow. High chances for snow, but low chances for much in the way of impactful snow as we go through the second half of the weekend. All right, you may have seen today uh, on the nightly news or online that finally an El Nino was declared in the Pacific Ocean. We've been talking about this since mid-fall, that it was likely going to be a winter featuring a moderate El Nino and based in the Central Pacific, and that's what so many winter forecasts were based upon. Guess what? That El, T that El Nino really never materialized. Yes, the temperatures are somewhat have been somewhat warmer than average in the Central and Eastern Pacific, but it hasn't been warm enough to declare an El Nino until now. Will this have any impact on our weather? Well, this is a pretty weak, sorry excuse for an El Nino. So, uh, you know, I'm not real optimistic or my, I should say my confidence isn't real high that the fact that the, there's technically an El Nino now will make much of a difference 
on our forecast heading into spring. The weather pattern across the U.S. this winter has been more like a La Nina rather than an El Nino. And so the spring may end up that way as well. But just for the sake of looking at things, here's kind of the uh, typical pattern that develops when you have an El Nino in the springtime. This is the months of uh, March, April, May. Warmer than average temperatures, Alaska, across a lot of Canada. Cooler than average, perhaps, in the southwest. And we're probably somewhere in between. That's uh, the temperature correlation. When we look at the precipitation correlation for those same months, uh, you get a wet signal across the southwest, southern plains, down into parts of the southeast, and kind of a dry signal across the upper Midwest. Guess what? This is kind of like the winter pattern has been, actually. Even though the winter pattern is a little bit more resembled, of, resembled a uh, La Nina, that uh, El Nino correlation for the spring, uh, as opposed to the winter, actually sort of looks like it's been all this winter with uh, you know, not a tremendous amount of precipitation, especially frozen precipitation this winter, uh, across the Great Lakes and a fairly wet pattern in the southern tier of states. Uh, I, I'm going to do a spring forecast here in a couple of weeks around uh, March 1st, so you can look forward to that on Weather for Weather Geeks. Uh, seasonal forecasts are difficult by nature. The transitional seasons tend to be even more difficult than the winter forecast, and this winter forecast turned out to be one in which we're going to learn, hopefully, a lot of lessons. Uh, I did not see any warm winter forecasts, and everybody had it at least somewhat cold this winter, and guess what? Everybody's going to be wrong. Uh, this winter has been a bust forecast-wise for a great many meteorologists, and part of the reason that El Nino really never developed. All right, that's it for tonight's Weather for Weather Geeks. Make it a great Thursday night, everyone. I'll see you back here tomorrow.